Hey guys, Baker here. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about boats. Boats, boats, boats. And especially, in my opinion, the best all-rounder ship, which is the Estoc, the first ship you get in the game. Why would you ask? Because it has very good overall res, it's super easy and cheap to upgrade to a comfortable level, where it has not the best speed, but a very good speed, and on top, you can do any sailing event with it to earn more pirate coins to save towards a really max upgraded Astray. And I know a lot of you guys think, okay, we heard about Astray all the time. It's the best ship in the game and everything. Yes and no. It's the fastest ship in the game. It has some really good crew members. But all that together will probably cost you around 700k pirate coins and... Just upgrading it is really hard. You don't get any free materials from, from the login rewards or any boxes. Getting the right sailors will cost you, on top of that, sun coins and a lot of other coins that you need. You need Uno tasks for 25 days at least to unlock it. You need to build 70,000 report with Black Fang. And you see, it's not that easy to get there. Meanwhile, you could have a level 7 s stock with really good crew and probably just use the login rewards and the free boxes we get from the event at the moment. On top of that, you can make a lot of pirate coins, sun coins and other coins by doing the co-op sailing events and see if that's fun for you. Either way, let's look what we're building. With all the free boxes that we got from the login event right now, you can upgrade your ship basically for free up to level 7. If you're missing any materials, you can find them in the Rohandel shipping boat outside of the town um, and buy the few missing parts. Usually you should end up having all of them in the boxes and maybe have to craft some of the ship parts either in the town at the processor or buy them on the auction house from other players. Either way, at level 7, we unlock for crew members and crew members are very important to ships because each crew member adds certain resistances and a speed bonus to your boat. So in the end we would love to have a level 10 stock with 5 crew members to have the best possible outcome from our ship. Keep in mind though upgrading past level 7 and especially 8 to 9, 9 to 10 will be very cost intensive, can cost you upwards from 200k pirate coins um, or raid seals in your hideout if you have the right vendor or find the right vendor that sells some of the ship parts. Either way, it's a really cost intensive process and once you're at level 7 and have your right crew set up and do some sailing events and maybe understand the system better after this video, you will know what to do if you really want to push your ship to level 10 and unlock the 5th member. So, let's see what members we chose. I chose to go with Relic Calls for the Great Tempest Res, Kelp Res, and Cold Snap Res. On top, it has the fastest speed on an stock ship, 2.2 knots. Then, you can use a Legendary Calls for, to bump your Tempest and Deadwaters Res even more up. I went with Epic Purple Ring and a Relic Purple Ring. My last member, the one I usually swap in often for one of the calls or one of the purple rings, depending what resistances I need, would be either Nyera or Tasha. Let me show you where you get all those members. Let's start with one of the most expensive, which is Relic Calls. It's right outside of Punica on the traveling merchant ship, which is called the Plum Crab Fishing Guild Shop, and it costs you 80,000 pirate coins. But it's the fastest sailor on your stock, and I would definitely recommend to get it for your everyday use. While we're in Punica, we can also acquire our second important sailor. We go into Punica, wait a little until the travel merchant changed, which roughly happens every 20 minutes. After buying Relic Calls, there will be a travel merchant ship at the same position that sell us a tier of the abyss. It costs us 8,016 sun coins, which you can get from the chests that you have from the event, for example, or from doing sailing events, adventure islands, and so on. And 
straight with that tier of the abyss you're sailing to island of mist trading it in for a relic to boring okay we have the two relics now we need legendary cults for that we go straight to yorn and there will be a traveling merchant ship outside of the city that will sell us legendary cults for 4000 Arcturus coins okay last but not least we need epic purple ring which will be outside of east lutera at this Perfish guild vessel which is another traveling merchant will sell us epic purple ring for 2000 Gianna coins while you're there and you don't want to do slime island for the rare tasha or you didn't drop tasha on cultures you can also acquire tasha for a thousand Gianna coins to complete your setup congrats you have a sick stock and ship setup in general so what can we do to boost our ship further one thing we can do is use our crystals from our founders pack or from the gold we transferred into crystals or just straight up buy a ship skin not only it looks cool it gives you some rest that you can put into the certain areas that you feel you need more resistances and on top of that they come with a cool skill that auto boosts your ship while it's auto sailing which means you can go afk and it will use your boost button your space button every time the meter is full so let's look into resistances just a little bit basically ship resistances are on a threshold basis where for example you need to reach 35 and 60 for certain thresholds so whenever you adjust your resistances or put points from your bought ship skin or acquire sailors or swap them for certain areas there will be a threshold that you need to reach to overcome the level four for example tempest waters i will include this graphic in the video although it's really confusing but just to illustrate that having like for example 35 res and 36 res is exactly the same now let's look into a really good setup for all the co-op sailing event. Personally, I usually do all the sailing events with the same setup that I just told you with the four relic calls, legendary calls, epic poopering, relic poopering. But I swap out one or two in Punica, for example, where we mostly have level four waters um, for Tasha or Ethan or whatever. If you want the perfect setup for every single co-op event, you can look at this list. Basically, those res will always keep you above the highest threshold and your ship will never break in those waters. I listed Punica, Phaeton, Yorn and Rohandel. As you see in Rohandel, our base setup is one of the best we can have. For the others, you can play around and see to reach the best thresholds for you but you will realize that with a level 7 ship and our sailors by swapping like tasha for the dead waters and like niera for the siren waters we will have no issue whatsoever i know this was a lot of information thank you so much for watching i hope it wasn't too confusing and too much but trust me once you get into the system a bit upgrade your ship a little get some sailors here and there and do some co-op events you will understand it way better and you will know what to look out for and what to upgrade on your astray and what to focus on especially so don't just go out spend a lot of pirate coins on your astray and have a bad ship with no upgrades no sailors and end up losing against the stock hero over there if you liked the video give me a like Subscribe to the channel. I will try to make more Lost Star content in the future. I stream every day at twitch.tv slash baker if you have any questions. And else, have fun and happy sailing.